welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today's video is a unique video because it's going to be talking about your application process for both medical school and dental school. As an oral and maxillofacial surgery resident, I have had the opportunity to go to dental school and medical school. So I have insight on the application process and what different schools look for. So I am happy to share that information with you with the caveat that every school is a little bit different and every individual is a little bit different. So I'm going to share my personal experience and my thoughts on the process, but because I've never been on an admission committee, I can't say that everything I tell you is 100% true, but it is based on all of my previous experience in applying to dental schools, medical schools, and having gone through both of them, what I think it takes to um, enhance your application, be a unique applicant, and what it takes to really stand out when you are in a pool of highly competitive and really, really wonderful applicants. So that's what the video um, is going to be about today. I hope that you find it valuable. And if you are curious why I went to medical and dental school, please make sure to tune into my channel. I have a video on oral maxillofacial surgery residency, what it entails and what this process about. I also have a really unique video about um, dental school versus medical school and if you're trying to choose in between and so that will also be interesting for you. Um, but today we will talk about the differences in the application process to both institutions. So thank you for tuning in and let's get started. All right, so the reason why I decided to lump everything in just one video instead of making a separate video about applying to dental schools or medical schools is because they really all have the same underlying standard. And so there's a lot of overlap, whether you're applying to dental, medical, PA, nursing, pharmacy, it's all in the healthcare field and they really, really care about one single thing. And that thing is that you are committed to serving people because that's the field that you're entering. You're basically serving people for the rest of your life and they really want to make sure that you are actually committed to the cause. So you can't just be all talk. You can't just say how much you love being a healthcare provider and why you want to be a doctor so much. You have to put some action and you have to prove that that's actually how you feel. And the way that you could do that is by definitely showing them by your um, past activities and shadowing experience and the hours that you've spent um, serving others, whether or not it was in the healthcare field, is really, really important. So for example, you don't necessarily have to volunteer at a blood bank um, for years and years and years in order to show that you are committed. You can volunteer at a preschool, you can volunteer at a soup kitchen. It doesn't have to be related to healthcare per se. However, it shows that you are somebody who um, is committed to serving others. And that's really important for a lot of the healthcare graduate programs and something that you really should think about very, very early Early on because what's really also very important is that you are not just volunteering for one month or two months out of the year that you have a long-term commitment because again you're entering a field where you're gonna be committed for a very 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 long time serving people so they want to see that I think it's a lot more important for you to show that you are committed to one thing that you're really passionate about for a long period of time than to have ten different things so this brings me on to my second point. They want to find someone who is really well-rounded. You can't be a bookworm for your entire life and get really, really, really high test grades um, and you know have a really high GPA and that's it. Because a physician is not someone who can just answer from a textbook. A physician is somebody who is going to talk to patients, you are going to become their confidant, you are going to investigate and um, build relationships with your colleagues and collaborate with other professions. And so you can't be somebody who's just book smart. That's great, we want smart physicians. That's definitely um, what programs are looking for, but you have to have other things as well. So. That means you have to have extracurricular activities, you have to have volunteer activities. Research is, you know, kind of like a bonus, but it's not something that you have to do. Um, I did a little bit of research and I think it enhanced my application and made it a little bit unique, um, but it wasn't like something that 
is a must. And so um, let's go back to the first point and that's the extracurricular activities that make you well-rounded. So what is going to be an extracurricular activity that they're going to be wowed by? It's really whatever you're passionate about. So that means find something that drives you. It does not have to be healthcare related. Again, that's going back to the first part of my talk when I talk about um, proving that you have service for humanity, um, a priority for yourself. So just pick something that you're really, really passionate about and commit to it. I think that's very, very important when you're applying to a program um, to show that you were really, really passionate about somewhat, something and you have dedicated a lot of time um, and you have been able to balance um, your good GPA with all of these extracurricular activities. So again, don't fill the extracurricular column with a ton of things that you did for one week, one month, two months and whatnot. Those are not really gonna be weighed very heavily. It's the things that you've committed to for a very long time. Sports is one of them because, you know, if you are an athlete, that means you have discipline, it means that you um, have uh, dedicated a lot of extra time and you've been able to balance um, studying um, for your classes and as well as uh, going to practice and doing all of these things. So sports is one thing. If you're not an athlete, don't worry, I was not an athlete. It's not like you have to be an athlete, but that's just an example of something that you want to do. For example, what I did in high school was I was on the leadership um, student council and I was in the leadership student council in high school, college, dental school, and then when I applied to residency. So that was something that I could really show that I am really passionate about student government. I'm really passionate about um, you know being a leader and that's really important to me. And so year after year, year after year, I have committed to that cause. Another thing that I did that I was really committed to was Cloth Flip and Palette student organization. I was part of Operation Smile in high school, college, um, in at um, dental school. I started my own student organization. So that really shows that I'm really, really committed to cleft Flip and Palette, something that I'm very passionate about. And I can do a whole nother video about my experience starting a student organization and how it really um, made me a very unique applicant for residency, but also was an incredible thing for me to do during um, grad school because it just really gave me something to be passionate about and remember why I'm spending all this time studying because I really want to help people in the end. And that was kind of like what I looked forward to. And so that was a really wonderful opportunity, but I do, I'll do another video about that. That's just another um, example of how you can show commitment and passion and dedication and the fact that you can balance extracurricular activities, a good GPA and all of that. Listen, you guys, the thing that you have to know is a lot of people who are applying are highly qualified. People who want to go to medical school are people who have pretty good GPAs, pretty good grades, pretty good SAT scores, pretty good um, MCAT score, pretty good DAT scores. Scores do, to a certain extent, help you uh, make the first cut, but they're not the end all be all. So if you did not score the highest in your class, it does not mean that it's over for you. And if you scored the highest in your class, that's also um, not a guarantee that you're gonna get all the interviews that you think you're gonna get just because you score high or you score low and then you think you're not gonna get anything. So really it's all about showing that you're balanced. It's all about showing that you are um, committed and you're compassionate and you deserve to be in the healthcare field and you've proven that um, by showing that you are committed to serving humanity and by the extracurricular activities because that proves that you can balance um, you know, all of these different things in your life because when you go to medical school and dental school, guess what? You're gonna be balancing a lot of stuff and they wanna see that you're able to do that. So um, those are the first two things that I spent a lot of time talking about because like I said, I think they're really important. I already touched on the fact that you can have research to enhance your application but it's absolutely not necessary. Um, if it is research, that is um, revolved around one of your passions. So let's say I'm, I was doing cleft lip and palate research. That's great because it really shows that you've taken you've taken your passion one step further, um, and that would be a nice way to tie things around and make you a really unique applicant. But again, it's absolutely not 100% necessary. Um, there are some schools that like research a little bit more than others, but I think across the board, that's just a bonus, but it's not an absolute must, 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 must. Um, so that's another thing. Okay, so we've talked about um, showing that you're committed to humanity um, with community service and volunteering and things like that. 
The other thing is showing that you can balance school and be a well-rounded person by being involved in extracurricular activities for a long period of time and focusing on things that you're really passionate about. The third day thing that we talked about is research. The fourth thing that I want to talk about, talk about is letters of recommendation. Do not get letters of recommendation that you think look good. For example, if you're applying to medical schools, you getting five letters of recommendations from physicians that you think are really awesome, but don't actually know you, so the letters of recommendations are not personal, they're not really um, great letters of recommendation, it's really not gonna help you. Even if you get a super famous physician to write a very, 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 very generic letter of recommendation that he or she wrote to five different students, um, that's not really impressive to an admission committee, uh, committee. Remember that these people are reading tons of letters, tons of applications. They could tell what's a generic letter and what's a really nice heartfelt letter. So if you actually shadowed a local physician um, in your community that was really wonderful and spent a lot of time for you and with you and can really write you a letter of recommendation that says, hey, I highly recommend this person because I'm in this profession and I can see that they're qualified, that they're committed, that they're gonna be a great physician and I highly recommend it recommend this person, that letter I think is way more valuable than a very generic letter from somebody that you think might look good on your resume. So that is another point that I wanted to touch on and something that will make your application really, um, really unique. I know that in undergrad it's really difficult to get letters of recommendation from faculty, especially if you go to a large university. I went to UC Berkeley. Um, some of my science classes were like a thousand students. How are you going to even know your professors? Who are you going to ask to to write you a letter of recommendation. And the key here is to build really good, strong relations with a couple of advisors, a couple of faculty, really go and seek out people specifically with the um, mindset that once you develop a really good relationship with them, you're gonna get a wonderful letter of recommendation from someone who actually truly knows you and can recommend you to a graduate program. So have that in the back of your mind. If you are first or second year um, in college, make sure that you get really close to the graduate students. They are your way in with the with the professors. And a lot of your um, graduate programs do require that you get science faculty to write you letters. And a lot of them don't accept um, grad students writing letters. But if you are building a really strong relationship with a grad student who works very closely to the professor and you can basically you know, work on a few projects together or do research or go to office hours so that that person really knows you well, that's your way in and you can actually start building a very good relation with that professor and get some um, letters of recommendation. Another way they can get a letter of recommendation, it goes back to my first and second point. If you've been volunteering a lot, you can get a letter of recommendation from whoever the director was and that's going to be a really good heartfelt letter of recommendation. Um, if you've been shadowing a dentist or a physician or a nurse, you can get another um, nice heartfelt letter of recommendation. So those always should be on the back of your mind. And this is key. Make sure you guys that you have multiple letters of recommendation. A lot of schools require at least three. Um, some schools require four, um, but most schools I think three is the average number. Um, a lot of schools require two from science faculty and one just random, whatever you'd like. So make sure that you don't just go ask for four letters of recommendation. You never know what's gonna happen. Um, you really never know um, who's gonna actually submit their letters on time. So make sure that you have backups. You have to um, network. This actually teaches you very early on that in this field, Network, 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 network. You have to get to know people. You have to put yourself out there. Ask for um, favors and ask people to do you things. Um, that's just good practice and what you're gonna have to do in the future in order, or in order to collaborate and really expand your network um, of professionals. So that's also very, very important. So after the letters of recommendation, I wanna talk touch briefly on personal statement. And the reason why I say I touch briefly on personal statement is not because it's not important. It's very important to write a really good, heartfelt um, personal statement. But the reason why I don't want to spend a lot of time on it is because this should be a very, very, very personal experience and something that you should really focus on for yourself. And don't you know, listen to a lot of different advice. A lot of people do tell you different, thing, uh, different things. I just want to 
touch on briefly what you should talk about and I really truly believe that your your personal statement is your opportunity to shine, to show your personality. Do not sit there and reiterate all of the things that you submitted on your resume. They already know that. They already see your extracurriculars. They already see that you have a spectacular GPA. They already see all that stuff. Do not rewrite that stuff. Your personal statement should be about your personality. Who are you as an applicant? Who are you as a person? Who are you with a bunch of your friends? Of course, don't go, you know, you don't need to be using slang and abbreviated. It should be well written, no spelling mistakes, professional, but it allows you to let your personality shine. It could be funny. It could be, you know, lighthearted and it, it really should just describe how you are as a person. So if you're somebody who likes to open conversations and break ice with a joke, you can use an appropriate joke in your personal statement. I think that's really great. Um, in my personal statement, I started with a story that really touched me and why I really wanted to be, um, a, a, a why I really wanted to go to dental school and the reason, you know, why I wanted to pursue that path and that career. And it was a story that was kind of completely unrelated to dentistry. It was talking about a person with cleft lip of palate um, that I met when I was really young um, and it was my neighbor and I just really went into that story and and how it touched me in so many different ways and, and how, you know, at the end I kind of saw myself being able to serve that population um, through dental school and now through, you know, oral maxillofacial surgery, I hope to be able to do that as well. Um, and so I just talked about that story. It wasn't really related to dentistry. It had nothing to do with teeth. It had nothing to do with my, um, you know, my uh, GPA, you know, my research, none of that. It really just talked about my passion and it really made my personality shine. Um, there were moments in there where I kind of joked and there were moments in there when I was kind of serious and I showed my emotion, my compassion. And I think it was a very unique um, personal statement. The other thing I want to say about personal statement is you should send it to one or two people that you trust to edit and give you feedback. Do not send it to 10 people. Everyone is different. They're gonna give you so many different edits. You're gonna get super overwhelmed. You're gonna rewrite that thing 450 times. Don't do it. I promise it's going to be so much better if you allow one or two people that you trust um, to edit to make sure that you don't have spelling or grammar ish, um, errors. You definitely don't wanna do that. I'm a terrible speller, you guys. Um, if, I, if it was up to me, I would spell the entire thing wrong, but I think it looks really unprofessional to submit um, you know, a, a, a personal statement that's not um, edited and spell checked and um, just kind of refined. So make sure that you do that. Make sure you give it to somebody that you trust, someone who is really into grammar and English and spelling and all of that stuff um, and have somebody edit it and then have somebody just give you their honest thought. If both of those people, you know, or one of those people just can be like really negative, um, feedback like oh I, I don't know I don't think you know I think this is a little dry or I don't think your personality shines through this maybe sit down think about it take a few days off and rewrite it and send it to that same person but don't send it to 10 people because you're gonna get 10 different opinions and people are gonna love it and people are gonna hate it and you're gonna be really confused so that's my advice to you um, and you know I think that one of the things that you can do in your application um, that will make you really unique it's not something that you you might think about is continuity you should basically carry a theme through your application. I don't think a lot of people focus on that and it's not really something that you think about right away, but having continuity through your application where someone, when they look at through your application, they realize, oh, hey, this person really has a few passions and I can see it. Um, for example, I'm gonna go back to the cleft lip and palate because it really was something that I um, am very passionate about and it came up in my application over and over again. Um, but if they see that some of your extracurriculars are surrounding cleft lip and palate and then they see that some of your research is surrounding cleft lip and palate and then you mention in your personal statement a little bit and then they see that you're part of a club or a student organization that's with cleft lip and palate and then um, one of the, you know, your you volunteered um, for a center that that touched briefly on cleft lip and palate. I'm not saying that you have to, you know, really beat a dead horse, but if you have this kind of theme throughout your application, they will really see that you are a passionate person. You're somebody that's super committed, and they'll pick on that without having it be like boom in your face. Um, you know, you don't want to be annoying and you know just continuously beat a dead horse, but having it subtly be a theme throughout the application is actually really, really unique. And I don't think a lot of people think about that. I think people, you know, really want to jam in as much stuff as possible because they think that's gonna make them unique, but I don't really know um, if that's actually true.
So instead of freaking out about how many extracurriculars or research or awards that you have on your application, focus on making them quality um, uh, submissions instead of just quantity. I think that's really important. That will make you really unique and stand out as an applicant. Um, and that's really, you know, kind of like the, the the basics of the application process for dental or medical school. Now I'm going to briefly talk about the differences between the two because um, there are very subtle differences. Dental school really, really, really wants to see that you know what dentistry is all about. They want to see that you know what you're getting yourself into. So shadowing a dentist or working in a dental office um, in any capacity, as a dental assistant, the front office staff, um, you know, just shadowing, but having that on your resume I think is pretty important because they want to know that you have, you know, taken the time to really explore the profession. It is a very unique um, profession where, you know, you could be a business owner, you could be a healthcare, you're, you're a, and you're a healthcare provider at the same time. Um, there's a lot of different aspects of the profession, lots of different specialties. They want to see that you've actually submerged yourself in the profession and you know that this actually is a good fit for you. So definitely, definitely um, make sure that you have that on your resume and your application. The other thing that's unique to dentistry is they want to see that you're a little bit creative. Remember that in dentistry, um, we deal with a lot of x-rays, we deal with a lot of cosmetics, you know, we deal with a lot of um, different things that require you to be a creative person. Um, I'm very artistic, I always have been, but of course I'm not an artistic person when it comes to teeth because I was just an undergrad. How would I e even relate that to teeth? So what I actually did is at the time um, between dental school um, and undergrad, I actually was baking some cakes and I was really into nail art. Super, super random. I got super into um, baking and making these like really fun fondant cakes. So you know what I did? I printed out all of my different cakes and designs and a lot of my nail art put them in an album and took them to all my dental school interviews. I think that was super unique. I showed them that um, I'm creative. I showed them that I have pretty good hand-eye coordination, that I um, you know, really love art, and that was pretty unique. So if you do have some sort of artistic ability and you can highlight that, I think that will make you a very unique applicant for dentistry. Okay, shifting gear to medical school because it is a little bit different. I think medical school really wants to emphasize the holistic approach to healthcare, that everything in the body is interconnected, the eyes, the heart, the lungs, the liver, the kidneys, um, somebody's mental status. So everything is really interconnected and really we have to approach humans as a whole and that's the best kind of healthcare and that's absolutely correct and you know it does certainly apply in dentistry but I think in medicine it's a huge priority and the way you know that's a little bit harder to show on a resume but I think the way that you can really emphasize the fact that you are very aware of the human condition and you're very very aware of um, you know the needs of humans it's like volunteering for different organizations and services that you know maybe do some social work things like you know um, uh, Teach for America or things like uh, United Nations and, and all of these different service oriented organizations that um, really take the whole person as a whole and kind of um, dedicate some time to showing them that you are someone that's really, you know, that's, that's very aware of the human condition and humanity and you're very dedicated to that cause. So I think that's really something unique. Um, it doesn't, it's it's absolutely not super necessary, but I'm just giving you the things that can make you really stand out and be unique. Um, and you know, if you are somebody, if going into medicine, you are somebody who really cares about people and you just have to show them and prove them, um, prove to them that that's what you are all about. And so, you know, volunteering in the, to those specific organizations and in that kind of capacity could be really really helpful so that's it you guys those are all of my tips and tricks for you know the things that can enhance your resume uh, as an applicant for medical schools dental schools but this could also be applied to pharmacy and nursing and PA because guess what we're all going to be in it together we're all going to be working together serving humanity and um, these grad programs just want to see that and I hope that you found this video helpful again I just want to emphasize that every application is totally different 
do not, do not, do not, do not discourage yourself from applying because you think that you don't have what it takes. You don't know what programs are looking for. Every school is totally different. Every school wants different kinds of applicants. So don't ever discourage yourself from applying. Always, always apply, no matter what your age is, no matter what your background is, how many community service hours you have, what your volunteer experience is, what your GPA is, what your MCAT or DAT score is. Do not discourage yourself from applying. Um, you are a unique applicant at the end of the day. Everybody's unique. Um, you just have to keep these things in the back of your mind as you make choices about what you want to do in, in your spare time or in school so that you can enhance your application and give yourself um, a, a better opportunity to uh, get interviews and get into the program that you really want to get into. So don't ever be discouraged. And if at first you don't succeed, pick yourself up and try again. So if you apply during one cycle and you don't get tons of interviews or the programs that you really want, try again next year. Again, they want to see that you're committed. They want to see that you are, um, you know, you really want to do this. And so applying for a second year in a row never, never hurt anyone. And in fact, I know people who applied two, three times and got in on third time or fourth time. And so definitely be committed and be persistent. This is your dream, your passion, and I believe in you and I believe that you can do it. Just do whatever you can to enhance your chances um, of doing it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you found this video helpful. Please comment below, let me know, you know, tips and tricks, things that you've tried, or if you have any questions, make sure that you subscribe to my channel, like this video, and visit my blog, www.15blades.com, and for daily posts and inspiration and interview tips and things like that, follow me on Instagram, um, at 15blades. Thank you so much, you guys, and I will see you next time.